In this video, we're gonna define what a subset of a given set is. So here's the definition. So if you're given two sets, A and B, we would say that A is a subset of B if all the elements from A are also elements from B, or elements in B. And here's the notation for how would we quickly write down or tell someone that A is a subset of B. It kind of looks like an inequality symbol, except it's a little bit more rounded. And uh, so, and it also works the same way where, you know, the subset thingy wants to eat the bigger one is how I remembered inequalities when I was a kid. So both of those two things are telling you that B is the bigger, that B is the set that contains A, or in other words, A is a subset of B. And uh, another note about subsets here, a set A can be regarded as a subset of itself. And another way to say that is that A is a subset of A is true whereas all other subsets of A are called proper subsets of A. And we've got a different symbol if you really want to emphasize to somebody that this set is a proper subset of another set. Um, you would use um, that similarly rounded subset symbol, but notice that there's no little bar beneath it. You can think of that bar underneath as like the possibility of an equal sign, or the possibility that the two sets might be equal, which I'll define what that means in a moment. But again, if you take that little bar away, then you're indicating to someone that uh, one is a proper subset of the other. And just to try to tie this back into something that you're probably more used to, in case you've never seen this stuff before, I'm assuming that um, you've seen some inequalities. So to recap what I just said, A is a subset of A is true, but A is a proper subset of A is false. And to tie that back into something that um, you're familiar with, it's sort of like saying three less than or equal to three is true because it's equal to and less than or equal to, right? The or tells me, oh, I can look at either one of the conditions that's true. All right, good. So that's how that symbol works. But I also know that three less than three is false, right? I know three is not strictly less than three. So I'm trying to say that um, the subset symbols behave in a similar way. So below, what's it mean for two sets A and B to be equal? And in parentheses there, I wrote down, you know, how would you denote that two sets are equal? And it's intuitive, you just say A equals B. But how do you, what's it actually mean? What do you show? Uh, and so you'd show two things, similar to how you'd show, you know, two numbers are equal like I did above. So you'd need to show one, that A is a subset of B, and you need to show the other thing, which is that B is a subset of A. And that's what that second one says down there. So for A and B to be equal, you need both of them to be subsets of each other. And that's similar to, as I was saying above, if you took real numbers or you took two numbers, X and Y, what's X equals Y really mean? That means that simultaneously X is less than or equal to Y and Y is less than or equal to X, or at least that's what you've been taught, you know, in like college algebra in that context. All right, so for example, let's say you had two sets. Let's say B, B looks like just all the integers and A looks like I'm just picking out the even integers. And I wanna compare these two things. And so, so far, the idea of a subset is my main way to compare some sets to each other, say. And what do we see? And I tried to color code this to make it easy to see. A is a subset of B is a true statement. And let's talk about why, and it's not too long. It's just because any even integer is an integer. And so in other words, that little blurb right there is just trying to describe in the picture that all the gold even integers that I've colored, they also show up in the list B. On the other hand, B is a subset of A is false since not all integers are even. So you see the integers that I left white, those are not even integers. And so there exists things that are in B that are not in A. Therefore, B is not contained in A. And so what does that tell us? That tells us for sure that A and B are not the same set. So we're just trying to use a concrete example to illustrate how do we use some of these symbols and ideas um, that we've learned in the past few minutes. And what have we done so far to recap? We've shown that A is a subset of B, but A is not the same thing as B. Therefore, we could say that A is a proper subset of B. And again, if you were so inclined, you could use that symbol without the little bar underneath it to denote that A is a proper subset of B. The last thing I'll leave you with is just a note. Um, in the previous video, the introduction to sets, there was this special set that was called the empty set. And the empty set, remember it's a set with no elements, the empty set is a subset of all sets. And another way to write that, if I was to write this a little bit more symbolically, so the statement empty set subset of A, that's true for all sets A.